Hey, this is John with WesleyGospel.com. Have you ever heard somebody say, dreams are just new age and just subjective? Have you ever heard that? Have you ever heard somebody say, and this might be like a person like really influenced by uh, Calvary Chapel or the Jesus movement. They, you know, they might be godly in a lot of other areas, but there's just a kind of a paranoia. Not a healthy fear, just a paranoia. And almost a practical cessationism when dreams start coming up. And um, that's not good. But on the other hand, let me explain why that's not good and why on the other end of the spectrum, um, enthusiasm can result um, if you're not if you're not careful with dreams, you've got to qualify dreams when you start taking them seriously as spiritual messages um, because you can end up demonically demonically oppressed um, through dreams if you're not careful. You have to be very careful. Um, so how are you supposed to be careful? Well, I've always recommended, you know, that people stay away from Catholicism in the sense of becoming Catholic. Don't become a Catholic. You know, stay within the Protestant Reformation in terms of your theology. But sometimes the Catholics have good theology when it comes to judging and discerning and sifting and sorting spiritual experiences like this. And one of the best things that I've ever seen in this area is... Um, Revelations and Visions by Augustine Pullane. Or, um, if you want the whole work, The Graces of Interior Prayer by Augustine Pullane. But he's got a section in there on Revelations and Visions. And basically he's talking about dreams, you know, and, and applying rules for how to tell if they're truly coming from the Holy Spirit or not. But you're going to often find, like, people who follow Dave Hunt or, or people like that who, you know... Uh, Harvest House type books, they're going to say, you know, just stay away from prophetic dreams because a lot of this can just be very subjective. Or they'll say dreams are new age. Look, that's why you never experience miracles, dude. That That's why. <laughs> dreams are the root source for all supernatural experiences flourishing in your life. If you say no to dreams, you're kind of saying no to the Holy Spirit in some way, shape, or form, at least when it comes to charismatic stuff. Um, Acts 2.17 says that when the Spirit is poured out, you're going to have dreams and you're going to have visions. And now it's your responsibility to take the Word of God and to take church tradition and, and, and learn how to judge your dreams. Let one prophet speak and let the other ones judge. What's that? It's talking about dream interpretation. Now, when when they pe when people say, you know, a lot of this can just be new age. What they mean is dreams that are about other gods. You know, dreams that the first commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me. So, we need to the first thing that we we need to look at with dreams is does it line up with the Ten Commandments? You know, is it calling you into paganism? Well, if so, that should be a dead giveaway. It's from the devil. Okay, dead giveaway. Um, Deuteronomy 13, uh, 1 and 2 says, If a prophet, or, in other words, one who foretells by dreams, appears among you and announces to you a sign or a wonder, in other words, a miracle or a coincidence, or something that fulfills or validates the dream supernaturally in the natural world. An event of some type happens, okay, that completely is like, whoa, that totally validated the message of that dream, okay? And other people can see it, okay? If a prophet or one who tell, foretells by dreams a appears among you and announces to you a sign or a wonder. And if that sign or wonder spoken of takes place, and the prophet says, and the prophet says, let us follow other gods, gods you have not known, and let us worship them, you must not listen to the words of that prophet or dreamer. The Lord your God is testing you to find out whether you love him with all of your heart and with all of your soul. Okay. Now, 
This is a really, really important passage when it comes to this subject of prophetic and spiritual dreams. We're looking at Deuteronomy 13, 1 to 3. There's two elements going on here. Well, actually three elements. Number one, we're talking about a prophet proper, a person who foretells by dreams, a person who has dreams and treats them as words of knowledge and maybe even gives them priority as words of knowledge. Okay, this is serious. Okay, because we're talking about the real supernatural here. So you have that. You know, you have... It's called a dreamer, okay? A person who really, 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 truly treats dreams seriously as spiritual messages and then delivers them as messages to people, okay? You got to take this stuff seriously. And there's two other elements coming into the picture other than the fact that the guy's delivering dream messages. Number one, there's going to be signs or wonders. In other words, miracles. Let's just call it miracles to simplify. There's going to be miracles that are going to happen, doesn't have to be a healing miracle, but there's going to be usually some type of a coincidence or some sort of a thing that's going to happen that he can't, there's no way he can manipulate that. It has to be caused by God or something, all right? You could call it a sign, a wonder, a coincidence. I just like to call it a miracle or a sign, all right? And now he appears and he announces a sign or a wonder, all right? Or he's going to say, hey, dude, guys, some miracles, some some coincidences are going to probably happen to validate some of the stuff I said here. Okay, so he's a prophet. He foretells by dreams. He announces coincidences. There's going to probably be some stuff that's going to come up that's going to validate what I said. All right. And then it does happen. All right. But then here comes the ee, here comes the ee part. Okay. Like in that game show, uh, Family Feud, where they would get it wrong on the sign. And it would be like, Eah. the guy says, let us follow other gods and worship them. Oh, okay. No, dude. <laughs> no. Deuteronomy 13.3 says, you must not listen to the words of that prophet or dreamer. Okay. No. Um, and then later on it says, put that guy to death. Okay, so new age means that. New age means that. It, it, it's when it's when um, a prophet or dreamer is saying, look, let's mix all the religions together. Let's mix Buddhism and Islam and Christianity and Judaism. Let's just mix it all together, you know. That guy is from the devil, or that guy, that guy's dream, let's just put it this way, that guy's dreams are from the devil, and he needs deliverance, and you do not need to be taking that guy seriously. Yeah, what happened was supernatural, but what happened was supernatural, but demonic. Okay. Okay. Now, so you're going to hear people in like the Dave Hunt crowd, you're going to hear these people who are ultra conservative, but cautiously charismatic say, you know, I just stay away from dreams because a lot of this stuff is just new age and a lot of it can just get subjective. You're going to hear this. So I'm speaking to that. So I spoke to the new age thing. Now I'm going to speak to the quote unquote subjective objection. All right. This stuff... If you don't know what you're doing, if you don't know what to expect, if you haven't been grounded in charismatic theology about dreams and visions, the quote-unquote subjective element happens when you're dealing with Christians that are trying to get into dreams and trying to dream journal and take their dreams seriously. But you, but you, um, you were, I'm still looking at Deuteronomy 13, 1 to 3 as a as a point of reference because it's still useful. We're going to now we're going to take out the let us follow other gods part. Okay? So now we're not we're not dealing with people having dreams telling us to follow pagan gods in this situation. Now we're looking at people who are Christians, only Christians, trying to open themselves up to the power and influence of the Holy Spirit by prayer, by faith, by baptisms in the Holy Spirit, and occasionally they get dreams. Dreams that they have every reason to believe could be from God. Okay, here's the thing. When people object to that, Christian dreaming, Christian dream interpretation, oftentimes they'll say, 
Yeah, but you know, a lot of this stuff can just get subjective. The only way to remove that is signs and wonders. The only way to remove that. Dreams carry no weight of authority on their own, by themselves, just being dreams. Because that's subjective. Those people are right. Dreams are subjective spiritual experiences that are only experienced by the experiencer, a.k.a. the dreamer. Okay, but notice notice here what's going on in Deuteronomy 13, uh, 1 to 3, that makes it makes it so serious so as to kill the man, right? It's not just because the man told other people to follow other gods. It is also because he announced a sign and a wonder that verified the supernatural source of the dream to other people. In other words, great weight was given to the dream. The dream was supernaturally verified to other people. In other words, it was taken out of the subjective realm and put into the objective realm to where it was, there was evidence given to other people that that dream came from the spirit realm. Okay, so that's when the dream is taken seriously as a not just a dream. Oh, it's nobody can look at that and say just a dream, right? Now it's a revelation. Now there's something supernatural going on, and now we need to take this seriously because there's signs, there's wonders, there's miracles, there's coincidences backing the dream up, and and there's other people that experience the sign, the wonder, and the coincidence after after the message was foretold. Okay, so let's take a look at Deuteronomy 13, 1 to 2 again. If a prophet or one who foretells by dreams, all right, step one, he gives a message out of his dream to other people. He gives a message out of his dream to other people appears among you and announces to you a sign or a wonder. Okay, now comes the coincidence step. That's step two. And if the sign or wonder takes place, in other words, the, the dream is fulfilled in some way, shape, or form. There's, there's, the dream gives some sort of weight. It, it is, is now taken seriously by other people because other people are like, dude, Something took place. Something lined up. Something weird happened. They're totally lined up with what that dream guy said the other day. Okay? And now we can stop right there. Okay? Because now later on, now we're getting into paganism. When, when Christian dream interpretation is going on, you need to have the signs and wonders backing up the dreams. Otherwise, those people are right. You know, a lot of this stuff can just get subjective. Dreams are just that. They're just subjective if they don't have miracles backing them up. Now, the miracles, signs, and wonders, and coincidences thing backing it up, we're not talking about healing miracles per se. We're usually talking about just coincidences that'll happen days or maybe a week after the dream was uttered. And other people, if there's other people involved... That has to be involved. Otherwise, there's absolutely no way those people will ever believe you that they're from the Lord. Okay. Now, when people don't understand this very important element, okay, and they're having dreams about other people, when they don't understand, when they don't include this important detail, about having the, the signs and the wonders to back up the dream. And they get lost into a, 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 a subjective world of dreams. Basically what you're looking at is people getting into deception. Okay, The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. We might as well call him the spirit of verification. He will verify that stuff. And... Then, of course, in the Old Testament, there are demons. The devil's the liar. The word devil literally means liar. And, and, and the Lord says, I will send a lying spirit in the mouths of all the prophets of Baal. There is a lying spirit. And 
evil spirits can give dreams to well and well-meaning Christians that don't know about the whole sign element. Okay, so in in let's go to Acts chapter two. Acts chapter two. This is a prophetic utterance delivered in poem format, so it can be kind of hard to decipher on first glance. But what you see is spirit baptism, dream interpretation, and then eventually signs coming from the Holy Spirit to verify stuff. And you might say, well, it's not being used exactly the way you're talking about, but the elements are still there. I think it, it's valid. So take a look at this. Acts chapter 2, 15. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only 9 in the morning. Okay, so people are getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Okay, they're at a Pentecostal prayer meeting. They're getting baptized in the Holy Ghost. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. People are starting to have prophetic dreams now because they got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Even on my servants, both men and women, it's not just for pastors and preachers, it's for everybody. I will pour out my Spirit on all in those days, and they will prophesy. Next thing it says, Acts 2, 19, I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. Now we're talking about end time stuff. Signs. You can take that to mean whatever you want, I suppose, but a sign, generally speaking, is a miracle or a coincidence or some sort of an event that happens okay that a person cannot manipulate at all it just happens right god does it notice in acts 2:22 it says fellow israelites listen to this jesus of nazareth jesus of nazareth was a man accredited by god to you by miracles wonders and signs see the miracles in this sense accredit the dreams and the visions, which were mentioned just about five verses earlier. This implies that Jesus had a lot of dreams and visions. And all of these messages that came from him were accredited by his visions, his miracles, his wonders and signs. One time Jesus said, I saw Satan light fall as lightning from heaven. What was that? It was a vision. Um, so... The accreditation, when other people are involved around the dreamer of dreams, miracles, wonders, signs, coincidences, events, have to somehow accredit Acts 2.22, accredit by God to you by miracles. There has to be some sort of an event that says, okay, I see what you're, I see what you're getting at. This could be from the Lord. And so that's how you get around. I was mainly, you know, using as points of reference um, Deuteronomy 13, 1 to 3 to handle the New Age issue, and Acts chapter 2, 15 to 22 to handle the signs and accrediting of dreams issue. Because when we take signs out, okay, when we take events out, Dreams are just vehicles of absolute deception. They're just dreams. That's it. They have no word of knowledge ability in them. You might think they do, but there's no way to really know that for sure unless a sign happens in the real world, in the non-dream world, right? Um, that's key. If that's not happening... You have no right to believe that a dream of any sort is from the Holy Spirit. Unless, of course, it's just from your personal private prayer life. It could be a dream straight from Jesus to you and for no other reason. But when we're talking about foretelling by dreams, when we're talking about delivering prophetic words from dreams to other people, miracles, wonders, and signs have to happen to accredit those things. Those people have no, no legitimate reason to believe in those dreams if those things are not happening. And, and the devil, the, who is a lying spirit, can easily 
pull people into deception if they stubbornly adhere to subjective dreams that have no outward verification by signs and coincidences. And when I say that, outward verification by signs and coincidences, when you're dreaming about other people, those outward verifications are happening to other people, not just the dreamer. Every time, whether it's Deuteronomy 13 we're talking about or Acts chapter 2, 22, the verification, the accreditation, the miraculous accreditation is happening to the other people who did not have the dreams. It's the, that's one of the key ways that you can know something's coming from God, especially if it's a prophetic word. God bless you out there. This is John with WesleyGospel.com.